nice to have you in the nice kitchen. Here, I, I met David, uh, and he was talking about different recipes that he have has. And and one of the ones that just intrigued me because I've never cooked with dates before <laughs> was uh, something that you called lamb with a tamer sauce. Yes, right? correct. Is that pronouncing? Uh, is yeah. it tamer or tamer? T tamer. Tamer, tamer sauce. Yep. Um, and uh, so I said, well, that's, I love the idea of lamb on the grill. Yes. So let's, uh, let's, let's see what we, uh, what we can do. The lamb part is pretty easy, but you, you, you have some tips here. Yeah, well, I mean, usually when you buy a, uh, a lamb rack, it'll look a lot like this. Yeah. Sometimes it'll come in two. And what you want to do is separate these. Now, you could do it two ways. You could, if you want, you could grill it full rack. Right, just like that. You know, yeah. and, and it will leave the inside kind of like a nice pink. Mm -hmm. But um, for to save time, that takes yeah. longer. Uh, what you want to do, if you can see this, but the bone kind of tells you where it wants to be cut. Right. And what you want to do is kind of just slide your knife up, down the side of the bone. that bone. Yeah, right down the bone. And it will just cut right off oh, like wow. that. Oh, wow. Nice. And see, there's your meat on that end. So then you do it on the same side of the next bone. Exactly. Always on the same side so that you end up with a, a nice, about an inch thick chop there. You can do them double. Some people like double. But once again, you're getting into a situation where you're kind of uh, yeah. cooking and longer. And every once in a while, you'll find... The shine bone is down there. Exactly. Just use a little around bit it. more, mm -hmm. and you'll go right through it. Yeah. So this guy... Was not just a, he was a little. <laughs> 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 They're not always cooperative, but right. You'll find it. You don't want to dull your knife either. That's. There you go. Yeah. And you get down here. If if you put too much pressure, what you're going to end up doing is just kind of slicing, slicing it. it. Yeah. So you kind of want to hold it, but keep your fingers safe. Yeah. Just find that bone and mm -hmm. slice it down the middle. Okay. That's a sight. Okay. So we got those. Yeah. And now we're going to marinate these a little bit? Yeah. And it's a very simple marinade. Um, I'll move this out of the way here. It's, it's literally salt, pepper, garlic, uh, crushed garlic is what I like to use. Mm -hmm. You can use garlic powder um, and some olive oil. Okay. So, it, I mean, it's, it's very... Uh, it's a very simple note. Don't be scared to, to put pepper, salt <laughs> on it because it's your seasoning. Right. It's the only seasoning that, that the lamb's going to get. Right. So you want to make sure that it's Gets well seasoned. on everything, yeah. So like, I'm taking this as my garlic here. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Use all of that. And then this is the fun part. You get to use your hands. And this is the olive oil. Right. Yeah. And I like to kind of get this get on the, here. Get it, get it dry rubbed. Yes. As it were. And then get the olive oil on because uh, the olive oil will help spread. Mm-hmm. All of the right. So that's seasoning. basically that's it. And then you would let these marinate for a little bit. Right. And and when you're grilling red meat, mm -hmm. what you really want to do is make sure that you you set the meat out about a half hour, depending on the thickness of the meat, before you grill it, right. so that it, it cooks properly all the way through. If not, if it's cold in the center, you're going to have a nice outside and a raw piece inside. of meat, and, yeah, right. and you don't want that. And we want these medium rare, so we they're not going to be on the grill all that long. Okay. So, but a, a tip, because these bones right here are very, very delicate, actually, right. uh -huh. you know, and so we don't want to, I mean, the whole point of this is the look, you don't want to have these bones char off, and this is an electric grill, so you don't have to worry about it, but it, for people using charcoal or gas, the flame will burn the bone, right. so it's nice to just make a, uh, a little rest for your, use, foil. Mm -hmm. You just make a nice V rest for the, the lamb chop bones to sit on. Now if you're doing the rack hole, yeah. you can just kind of cover the bones with the foil. Okay. So if you just set that on like that. Right. And then just set the bone up. Oh, I see. It keeps it off of the flame. Mm -hmm. And you're not going to, uh, literally it'll be like burnt wood. Yeah. And you don't, <laughs> no, that doesn't look too nice. No. And especially if you want to use that as a handle. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> and lamb, you know, uh, it, lamb's a little bit of an investment. It's not hamburgers or, yeah. or things like that. So, I mean, you definitely want to protect it as best as you can. Right. So, uh, they're going to be on about, about five minutes a side, mm -hmm. four or five minutes, depending on the thickness of them. Right. And uh, in the meantime, you you got to show us how to make this tamer sauce. Yes, the tamer sauce. Now, is this is there a particular nationality? Is this a, an ethnic uh, kind of recipe, or 
I mean, it uses dates, so I figured it might be Middle Eastern of some sort. Well, there's Middle Eastern influence in it, but it's it's actually a classic French sauce. Oh, okay. That, that I've kind of fused some uh, Middle Eastern flavors into with allspice and dates. And so the recipe itself is a very kind of French approach, mm -hmm. but the flavors are Mediterranean, Middle Eastern kind of a, a approach. All right. And um, it's a, a classic French sauce to start. So what we have to do is... Uh, uh, I have a pan kind of going. Infuse some uh, brown sauce mm -hmm. with some vegetables. So, onions, carrots, celery, a little bit of garlic, and uh, that's all really. And it, it can be just a rough chop mm -hmm. because we're just going to, these are all going to be coming out of the, you know, out of the, we're going to be straining it out. Right. So, the carrots, the celery, don't worry about it. It's all. You can use the roots. You don't have to really worry about peeling the carrot if you don't want. It's right. all flavor, actually. Mm -hmm. And you know, a lot. Of, I took the skin off the onion, but you can leave that on. Yeah, it I do really when I adds chicken soup. I always yeah. leave the skin on the onion. It yeah. gives it a more yellow color. Right. Exactly. See, it's Whoop. very rough chops. Um, and the garlic, you just crush it. Something else that you did that I I know uh, I I think is important, and and that is the some people trim their celery and take off the leaves. <laughs> And, uh, folks, the leaves have a lot of flavor. Don't Delicious. throw those away. Yeah, yeah. so I, I actually look for leafy mm -hmm. celery so I can have it for my soups. Making potato salad? Oh, yeah. Put the leaves in the potato salad. Mm -hmm. It's absolutely uh, delicious. I've marinated yeah. the lamb with the olive oil. Some people are scared the olive oil will burn and mm -hmm. give you a burn flavor. But you shouldn't really be that nervous about that. Any oil will do. Olive oil adds more flavor. Okay. So, you want to let that soften a little bit, and uh, with a little bit of flour, once they once they start to soften, you add a little bit of flour. Mm -hmm. and All right. So just stir that around to get the flour stir distributed. It around, and once it, whoop. Oh, he don't want to be. He in don't want to be in there. That's right. <laughs> I don't blame him. It's a little hot. It's a little hot in there. So I'm just gonna. Flip Time the, to flip uh, the. Um, yeah, some of them are a little bit thinner than others, so. Yeah. Boy, it doesn't take long, does it? No, not at all. Mm-hmm. There we go. Oh boy. Smells well, you nice. can you can smell that garlic uh, from <laughs> here to. There's nothing wrong with forever. garlic. Forever. Yeah. Keeps the flies away when you're grilling. Mm -hmm. All right. So, so we got that, and let's say that that is now cooked until the flour you and, know, the, and the vegetables are softened a little bit. Right. And then what you want to do is is add uh, some dates at this point mm -hmm. to allow them to start soft and giving up their flavor. It'll add some flavor to the sauce. Let well, that cook a little bit. Longer. I mean, that's the thing. I, I I was amazed with this recipe is that is that the the, the dates add so much flavor. I always thought of them as just like an, a, something for dessert. You just have a right. date, you know. Whatever. Yeah, and and you know, a lot of people are scared to cook uh, with fruit, mm -hmm. Dr but dried fruits they handle the cooking extremely well. Yeah, and that was some bay leaf. Bay leaf. Okay, and then just uh, beef broth. If you want, you could use a lamb stock, mm -hmm. but it's impossible to find. So yeah. beef works just fine for the sauce. All right. And you want to cook that a good, good 20, 20, around 20 minutes on a low heat. Right. And what that will do is it will infuse the sauce with all the flavors. Right. And then once this has cooked all that time, mm -hmm. then you got this um, French sauce technique here. Where you are you going to strain out the vegetables, right? right. And, and make sure you use a bowl underneath and don't make the mistake I've made a couple times of going to the sink with the strainer and oh, no, keeping the vegetables and gonna, losing the. We're <laughs> going to do it right here and show folks what it looks like. Um, so I'm mean, actually that sauce would be a little bit thicker than this. Right, it would be a little bit thicker, but not much at this point. And in the end product, what you want is something that's a, a little bit thicker than than like an au jus, mm -hmm. just, a, just a, a and a little bit thinner okay. than a gravy. All right, so, so then, we can, then we can just lose these. Right. Whoop. And and then at this step, what you would do there, from this point, right? If you were doing this at home, you would put this back into the into the pot. You would add more dates. And you have some and let that's them done. Cook. Right. Okay. 
So that's really a classic <laughs> French style sauce. Yeah, there's a lot of steps. Yeah. yeah. Um, and this needs to heat up a little bit, that right? It needs to heat up a little bit. And what that we're going to do is just the one more step of, of thickening with that. Okay. So if we can clean out that pot, we can oh, make yeah. the roux. I'll do it, Chris. I can do it. I can do it. Doesn't bother me. Well, I know your <laughs> directions in the in the cookbook are quite explicit about making this sauce, and it it seems it said to me, you know, because I'm a like a simple cook. Right. Um, it, there are a lot of steps to it, but what you end up with is something that's really quite refined. So it's it's worth trying uh, trying it the the, the long complicated way. I think there's a few steps, but you know, in the end, it's worth it. Not just that the steps. Even though they're numerous, they're mm -hmm. they're not that difficult, really. Right. I mean, it's it's pretty simple. Mm -hmm. These are getting just about where they need to be. So by the time we have a sauce, okay, we'll have the lamb. All right. So we got the um, we got the flour cooked here. And again, you said you'd want to get this a little bit more. Yeah, just brown. So it starts to have a little bit of a nutty flavor, but mm -hmm. but that's good for the. Are we? Okay. Yeah. And uh, if we have a whisk. A whisk? Yeah, yeah we have Please. something back there. Thank you. Yeah. Shall I put this in? Yeah, I'll help you out. Okay. Because you don't want this to get lumpy at this point. Right. Lump. It's just like making a gravy. Mmm. So you'll get, you'll get, I mean, there's a you know, it's a little sweet uh, from the dates. Mm -hmm. I actually want to taste this. You have a spoon in there. Yeah. I just want to have a taste and see where this is. You could tell me if it's something like, you know, when we're cooking on television, it's always a little bit difficult because it's not the same amount of time you would spend in a kitchen. Oh boy. Hokey smoky, folks. That is delicious. Oh, my goodness. You wouldn't even know that the, the dates are in it. No, no. There's just a little sweetness mm -hmm. and a flavor that you don't recognize if you're not, you know, exactly. if you don't eat a lot of dates. Exactly. Okay, well, that's, uh, boy, that's right, about ready to go. You could put that on a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. <laughs> this is good stuff right here. Well, let's plate some okay. of these up and see what okay. it looks like. Do we have a plate? Yeah, right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we'll do the large since we're doing a picnic. Yeah. Picnic style, right? Picnic style. Family style. And uh, it's a very, it's a very brown plate. So obviously, if you're worried about what it looks like, you can add some green, to a little bit of lettuce, a little bit of parsley, something like that to the mm -hmm. plate. But uh, I'm not worried about it. And you see the bones; they they do cook. They're not yeah, raw. Right. But they're not burnt. But they're off not burned. Either, yeah. Which is. Definitely, what you want to be nervous about. I, I like that trick with the uh, the T. You know, I make, I'm making a V rather on, right, on the yeah. on the grill. Um, mm -hmm. uh, let me get you a spoon sure. for the sauce here. Oh, we got big yeah, spoon. Better than that. Yeah, there we are. Put that over. Oh, let me tell you, folks, this sauce is unbelievable. It's like Middle Eastern barbecue sauce. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. Yeah, there you are. All right. And I'm guessing you'd like to try one. I first. have to have a little taste, yeah, because uh, it's part of my contract <laughs> to make sure that this is safe and for appropriate. Yes, right. I guess I need a, a knife. knife. Yeah. Mm. So I'll just use. Or you could just pick it up by the bone and. Well, you know, we try to look a little bit more refined <laughs> than that. Mm -mm, okay. <laughs> David, 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 David. <laughs> that is amazing. You know, I love lamb, but with that sauce on it, yeah, this is incredible. When David sent in the recipe, he said, this is one of my treasures. <laughs> and um, now I know why. The lamb, by the way, is cooked perfectly. Good. And all the flavors, um, they're just the, the, uh, the garlic and the salt and pepper that you put on there, it's not over-seasoned. No. But boy, you know you're eating something. This is delicious. And David, thank you for sending you. in the recipe. No, thank you. Thank you yeah. for um, uh, sharing this with us. And now you can get David's recipe for lamb with tamer sauce uh, and over 150 more terrific recipes for picnics and barbecue. I have a feeling you might like to taste oh. the lamb. Oh. 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 Um, 
<laughs> it, I have to, it, it's so delicious, and I'm that sauce. I'm just looking at it. It's so tender. It, well, of course, it's just a little but lamb chop. My grandmother used to say, it strengthens your blood to eat a lamb chop. Mm -mm. Isn't that so? Mm -mm. I know, I know, I know. It's mm -mm. <laughs> Now, anybody can make a lamb chop. No, wait. My grandfather used to butcher our lamb. Yeah. So it was fresh, fresh, fresh. Yeah. This tastes like my grandfather's butchered fresh lamb. Yeah, that this was just so wonderful. Okay, come and taste it while it's hot. <laughs> I know oh, she's I done. love you, Quinnin. <laughs> I knew oh that was going to be a big hit. You can talk while we're just sort well, of savoring. But here's the thing about the cookbook. It has special things like this, but it also has the basics. You know, you want to go on a picnic, you need potato salad. You need baked beans. You need to learn how to make a brisket. You know, so, uh, yeah, you didn't mind. Yeah.